All right, so now we move into lesson five of measurement and its conversion within and between SI and imperial systems. So what we're gonna look at is in the last lesson, while well, we looked at a ton of metric conversions, now we introduce this idea of the imperial system. We talked a little bit about it in lesson two, but now we're gonna actually focus on it in terms of what it actually means to convert between the two measurement systems. Starting with the chart here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this in based on the unknowns here. So there's a couple spots that have blanks and these blanks we need to fill in with the appropriate number that would represent the complete conversion here. So if we look at the first one that's blank, well, one yard is the equivalent of 0 0.9144 meters. One mile is equal to 1.603 kilometers. And then and it's actually 609. We're going to short form it to 609. And then in terms of one meter, this is going to be 3.2808 feet. One meter is how many yards? Well, it's going to be 1.0936 yards. And then one kilometer in terms of miles is going to be 0 0.6214. All right. Now going down to conversions within the imperial system or our secondary measurement unit system, this is the one popular in the U.S. If we look at this, we're going to look at the following examples. Well, if I want to take six foot seven into inches, well, what I have to do is realize that if I have six feet, well, per foot, there is 12 inches. So I multiply it by 12 and then I add the seven that are here. So this is going to be 79 inches or IN. Now going to B, we look at B and we say we want to take five yards and two feet and convert it all to feet. Well, that means per yard, there is three feet. So what I'm going to do is go five times three plus the two that are there. Well, that's 15 plus two. That means we have 17 feet. One mile and 255 yards, just to purely yards. Well, in each mile, it's one times 1760, which is the amount of yards in one mile. And then we're going to add our 255. This is going to give us a total of 2015 yards or YDS. All right, going to our next one here. Instead of just taking a six foot something inches or this amount of yards this many feet what if i take a total measure of 51 inches and then convert it into some amount of feet and inches well starting with this one i'm going to take 51 and divide it by 12 and what i'll realize is that there's four that can go into this or 12 can go into this four even times with the remainder of the following we're going to have three over 12 or one fourth but what we should take away from this is that there's going to be four total feet and then three inches remaining from that. All right, same thing with this next one here. We're going to take 73 feet to yards and feet. Well, in each uh, yard, there is three feet. So I'm going to take the 73 total feet and divide it by three. This is going to give me a result of we should get 24 and one third. And then if we take this and separate it, it's going to be 24 full yards or 24 YDS, and then a remainder of one third feet. One third of a, our one third of a yard is technically one foot, because when we look at this, three uh, feet like this would give us a full yard. So if we only have one of them, that means we have one foot to go with this. All right. Lastly, we look at the following example. We're looking at yards to miles and yards. Well, in each mile there is, so one mile is the equivalent of 1760 yards. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, if I take 1760 and I wanna say how many times does that go into 4,215 evenly, it would be two times. And so I could be like, well, two times 1760, this is gonna give me a result of the following. Let's just make sure we put it into the calculator and get an exact answer here. Two times 1760, that's an answer of 3,520. Now, what we wanna do from here is because we know that it goes in to this measure two times, what I'm gonna do is take 4,215 and subtract 3,520 from that number. If I do this, 4,215 minus 3520, this gives me a result of 695. And so what I can say here is that we have two uh, full miles and left over from here, we have 695 yards. Now, this number as a fraction could have been written as the following. We could have said it's 2 and 695 over 1760. So that's the way to see it, but our answer is the one that's above there.
All right, now going on to our next example here, we wanna take 0.4 miles and convert it into inches using the following method, either proportional reasoning or unit analysis. But we're going to actually show both because we want to make sure we're actually familiar on both uh, ways we could approach this. So what you should realize is that there's actually not a way to directly convert from miles to inches. On our formula sheet, we do not have something that takes this and goes directly to inches. So what we're going to have to do is for proportional reasoning, we're going to have to do it in two parts. The first part is going to be we want to set up these ratios where one ratio is equivalent of the other ratio, or more importantly, we have X amount of, we're going to convert to feet first for 0.4 miles. And we know that however many feet are in a mile, well, that is actually equal to 5,280 feet per one mile. And so we're going to put this into our calculator where we cross multiply this number up here to isolate for the X feet. And we're going to find that X number of feet is equal to 5,280 feet times 0 0.4 miles divided by one mile. And what we're actually gonna find here is that our miles cancel, those units eliminate, and we have X feet is equal to, and I'm gonna put in the measure here, we get a total of 2,102, uh, and this is feet. But we didn't want feet as our final calculation. So here's what I have to do. Proportional reasoning again, I'm going to set up the two ratios. And the one ratio, I'm going to say that we have X inches or the unknown inches over 2,102 feet. And we know per one foot, there is 12 inches. And just like we know from proportional reasoning from our pre previous lessons, if we're doing a measure, the inches or the same unit must be in the numerator and the same unit must be in the denominator. And these could have been flipped. Realistically, they could have been flipped. But when I start with the unknown in the numerator, it's for uh, less steps for this. Now, I'm going to cross multiply this. So I'm going to take this number from the denominator, multiply it to the top here. This is going to be equal to, well, I'm going to say that we have, and maybe I'll continue it below just so we can create room here. X number of inches is equal to, we're going to take 12 inches and multiply it to the 2,102 feet and divide it by the one foot that was in the denominator. What we're going to notice is that the feet measures go away. We're just left with inches and 12 times 2,112 is equal to 25,000. And then we have uh, 344 inches. So that is 0 0.4 miles in inches. Here's our solution. Now, that's one way we could do it, is using proportional reasoning, just like we did here, where we convert from one unit to another and then use that unit as a way to con uh, connect it. Or we could use unit analysis. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase this piece here just so we can create a little bit of space for ourselves. Using unit analysis, I'm going to start with the 0 0.4 miles, or MI, and I'm going to multiply it by, we're going to use those same ratios here. Well, I knew that if I go back to the first part here using proportional reasoning, we said that... 5,280 feet is equivalent of one mile or one MI. And then because we don't want to stop at feet, we want to get it in terms of the inches here. What I'm going to do is multiply this ratio by 12. Uh, actually, my apologies here. This is going to be one foot. And then this is going to be 12 inches in the numerator. Now, what we're going to find from this is that we actually can cancel our MIs. We can cancel our feet measure and we're only left with the inches measure. Now, when we multiply this out, 5,280 times 12 times 0 0.4, it's going to give us the following result, 25,344 inches. So what we realize is we actually get the exact same answer, whether we use unit analysis or we use proportional reasoning. Now, just to really explain the difference here, proportional reasoning says, I am keeping or maintaining the ratio between the two sides. So even though I'm looking for either a larger or a smaller amount of those numbers, when I'm converting between these ratios here, what I'm saying is that when I go from the known ratio or the known conversion and I set it equal to some unknown amount or a known amount, it must be true that the ratio between these is equal to the ratio of the right-hand side and vice versa. Same thing with our second part. Ratio of the left side is equal to the ratio of the right side. Unit analysis, on the other hand, says, well, we're going to take whatever value is given, and to convert it, we need to use the known ratios off the formula sheet to help us cancel units and properly convert to the unit of our desire. Now, swiping over to the next page here, 
I want us to look at the example here. And what I want us to look at is, suppose we were given this setup here, which uses unit analysis. In step two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cancel the units that we see existing in the numerator and denominator and see what they want us to convert to. Because if I consider this to be the original, so I'm gonna say that this piece here is our original ratio that we were given. They're saying that if we use these conversions here, we're gonna get some sort of new ratio. Well, what that's gonna become is the following. Our centimeters go away, because I see those in the numerator and denominator. Our inches go away because numerator denominator again, what I'm left with is meters over feet. And when I calculate this, I'm going to get the following result here. So I type this into our calculator, uh, 2.54 times 12 divided by 100, and I get a value of 0 0.3. And then just to get this exact, 048. And what am I left with in the numerator? It's meters over in the denominator feet. So we went from originally something that was in terms of centimeters per inch and now have something in terms of meters per feet. But we should realize that, or meters per foot, I should say. But what we should notice in the end is that the ratio between them is the same still. All right, now going down to class example four here, we want to convert the following. Five feet, 10 inches to meters. Well, there's no conversion that goes directly from inches to meters. So what we're going to have to do here, or no conversion that goes directly from feet to meters in this sense, like where we have feet and inches separated like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine this and say, well, we know five feet can be multiplied by 12 to get the total inches plus the 10 that was actually already in inches. This is going to give us a total of 70 inches between the five foot and the 10 inches coming together here. Now, what we want to do is convert this to meters. So first of all, what we're going to have to do is go, well, we need to multiply this by a ratio that will get it into, um, in this case, something that will deal with centimeters, and then we can go to meters because there's not actually a direct conversion between inches to meters. So here's what I mean by that. We're going to multiply using unit analysis. We know that per one inch, there is going to be 2.54 centimeters. And then we want to multiply this again because our final answer wasn't to be in centimeters, it was to be in meters. We know that in one meter, there is 100 centimeters. Now, when I do unit analysis, the thing that will tell you if you're doing this right right away is your units should cancel because you should have one in the numerator, one in the denominator. One in the numerator, one in the denominator. When I multiply this number out and divide it, I'm going to get the following result. I get this is equal to 1.778. And this is meters, because our final solution was to be in meters here. There we go. All right, now we're going to look at the next example here. I want to convert meters into feet and inches. Well, the way I can approach this is to say, what if I want to make this so that I convert it all into something that I can relate in terms of, I want to convert it right from uh, the meters into inches and then deal with it from there. So here's what I mean. If I take the 2.0573 meters and I multiply this to get into centimeters and then into inches here, well, here's what it's going to look like. In every one meter, I have 100 centimeters. And then when I multiply this to get into the inches, what I'm going to have to do is say, well, in 2.54 centimeters, I have one inch. Now, I'm going to cross out all the things I know from here. So I know that meters are here, meters are here, centimeters are here, centimeters are here. And what I'm going to do from here is say, well, if I multiply the first number, 2.0373 times 100 divided by 2.54, I'm going to get a total of 81 inches. Now, I'm going to make sure this is really clear because I actually just said 8. We got 81 inches here. Now, you're probably like thinking, okay, how does that help me get feet? and inches as a total solution here, well, what we're going to do is the following. Now that I know it's an 81 total, I'm going to say 81 divided by 12 is going to be equal to, and when I divide this, I get that there is six even groups of 12 that fit in 81, and then we have a remainder of the following. The remainder is going to be nine out of a possible 12. So we have full six complete units of 12 in 81, and then we have a remainder of nine. And now when I was to tell the answer here, it would look like the following. The full unit is six feet. And then the remaining inches we have left over is nine inch. So our total solution here is going to be six foot nine. 
All right. Now, going down to our last example, before the digital age, we often looked at things on film. Now, film was big reels, and these reels of this film could be converted onto DVDs. And what we want to do is look at the following information. If I look at this problem, 1,500 feet of film can fit on one DVD. Determine how many DVDs will be needed for 2,183 meters of film footage. Now, we could go one of two ways here. I could either go 1,500 feet to something in meters, or I could go from the meters to the feet. For this example, what I might do is just go into the feet calculations, but you could go either way technically to get the solution. I know in class we did both ways. I'll maybe show, show one of them here. So suppose I want to convert the one measurement or this measurement into feet. Well, here's how I'm going to do it. Step one, we're going to take to the 2,183 meters and multiply it by, well, the ratio from your formula sheet that represents this is we know one foot is the equivalent of 0 0.3048 meters. Now, when we cross or when we multiply this, I should say, using our unit analysis, our meters are going to cancel. We're just left with feet. And this is going to give us a measure of the following, 7,000. 162.07 feet. And the decimal continues on and on, but we're going to truncate it there. Now, what we're going to do with this is for part two, if we know that the total amount of film footage is this, and the amount that can fit on each of the discs is this, we're just going to divide one by the other. So we're going to take 7162.07 feet, divide it by the other feet, or the div uh, divide it by the feet per disc, then when we look at this, we're going to cancel out our feet measures because we have foot over foot. And this is going to be equal to when we round it, we're going to, well, not when we round it, we're going to take the actual answer currently. So 4.77 discs. That's what it's telling us. It's saying we need 4.77 discs. But of course, we're not just going to like break a disc and, and treat that like we can store information on it. What we need to realize is this is like a, a problem involving people or objects. We need to round up to the nearest up to full amount of object. And so therefore, our final solution off to the side is going to be five discs are needed. Because if we have enough information that it goes over for, that means we're at least going to need five and we round up to that. All right, here's where you're going to really want to get work with the assignment because going from SI to Imperial or vice versa is quite difficult at first. Honestly, you might struggle. And especially when it comes to the unit analysis stuff with how important it is for your future in science, you really want to be knowledgeable about this. So please get to work on this.